Welcome back to Let's Play Dishonored. We're just hanging out here with Lord Pendleton, whom I've uh, just spoken with again. And uh, without thinking, I opened this trunk and picked up a pouch of dollary dues with 50 coins in it. But you haven't missed anything else. So, let's get this uh, audio log. My furnishings have been installed at last with no small amount of complaining by that antiquated boatman. The others have no idea what it's like to suffer as I have. Speaking of which... Wallace! Please breathe two bottles of Dunwall Red, never mind which, and fetch a clean glass. <sighs> well... I'll begin again tomorrow. The Admiral served in the Navy under the Empress, but something happened with the Lord Regent that drove the Admiral out. If I understand it right, Admiral Havelock made it very clear that we aren't to carry lamps outside. Maybe you haven't seen much of it, but the city has changed a great deal after the Empress died. Since the Lord Regent took over, the city watch is best avoided. Most people try not to go outside at all. We can't leave the pub. I have nowhere to go anyway. My apartment was in the flooded district. Well, that was un uh, unhappy, I suppose. Skilled in the sensual arts. Oh, um... The game came with a double-sided poster. I didn't put it up. God knows where that is now. Uh, and this was one side of it. The Bitterleaf Crematorium and Fluid Works. Actually, a bunch of text under... Oh, I can't really see it here. There was a bunch of text under there talking about, uh... They're nice premium, uh... They're nice affordable, uh, services for, uh... Disposing of the remains of your loved ones in a discreet and dignified way. Maybe they should have made it nighttime if I wanted to emphasize how dark it is. Just thinking. Actually, no. Let's go down. Let's go go down the stairs. We need to get down to Piero after all. Attention, citizens of Dunwall. The old port district has been added to the evacuation list. The weeper count for the month of seeds has increased. The Lord Regent has decreed that plague ordinances will remain in effect through the month of rain. Stay alert and stay loyal. The uh, other side of the poster is for uh, a whaling company. Yeah! Oh, hey. Well, it's humble, but it looks, uh, livable. Probably much better than what I had in prison. No one's jabbing me with hot fucking pokers for a start. There's nobody's fucking needling my flesh. River traffic is forbidden from landing in the distillery district due to risk of infectious contact. Violators will be taken to the flooded district for treatment and rehabilitation. I'm going to assume that means uh, we'll be put to death quietly. And I did see Samuel over here, so one last bit of business. I once served under Admiral Havelock, Captain Havelock then. I don't know if he remembers me, 
but I fear it's rude to ask. I don't want to embarrass him. I was just a common riverman, hauling parcels and such along the river. But I know how to keep my trap shut, I do. This is about as far downriver as I care to go. Toward the flooded district, the river's thick with corpses. Great. I've seen battles in my younger years, and I see you've got the stuff. Say the word, and I'll back you. All of the little people in the city like me, we miss the Empress something terrible. And the fact that young Lady Emily is out there somewhere still lost, it's just too much for most folks to think about. Cape of Teeth map. Ah, it's a Stellary News. Mysteries of Pandisia. Excerpt from a book in the far continent, Pandisia. At the Academy of Natural Philosophy, they speak of a Pandisian continent as a place of wonder, where all of life is entwined and blossomed across eons, producing a vibrant ecology unrivaled in the civilized world. The overseers in the Abbey of the Everyman, by contrast, talk of horror and heresies. Of cults of submen engaged in brutal, perverse rituals. The few who have traveled to the far continent and come back to the Isles, those who have actually touched the soil there, have returned with notes that describe vast deserts, deep jungles, and outlandish creatures that defy belief. Once in a generation, a great effort is mounted to build a colony there in hopes of this Sunday growing into a port city to rival Dunwall itself. But to date, these attempts have all ended in madness and failure. Should be where they kept dogs. Great. Ha! Ah! Just a second, burning dog fans. Let me crack the window. Okay. I uh, noticed, since I accidentally hit back instead of start for whatever reason, that I actually happen to have exactly $1,500 dues. Isn't that neat? Lord Regent minted coins. Hmm. But there's still Empress coins out there somewhere. For now, I have 1,500 of the stupid Regent dollar dues. In any case, let's finally get on with it. I'll be crafting your weapons and gear. All custom work. For you, I will create the tools of a master assassin. No! This cannot happen now. The tank of whale oil is running. Will you get a new tank from upstairs, please, while I hold this in place? Be careful. Oil's unstable. When it explodes, there is a terrible mess. The dispenser upstairs will provide you with a fresh tank of whale oil. They're heavy, but you are no doubt strong enough to carry one back down here, if you would. Handle them gently, or they will explode and kill us both. Did I mention that already? So oh, great. The device is fragile in this state. I must attend to it. The whale oil is in the tanks filled with the blue fluid when they aren't drained anyway. Do you see it? The dispenser on the wall upstairs? Star chart, southern skies. I didn't I didn't do that. It started closing on its own. Creepy. <sighs> okay. A second solution. An excerpt from a series of newspaper articles from by, from prominent natural philosophers by Piero Joplin. It is through no fault of my own that the average citizen has expressed a preference for Sokolov's elixir of my own formula, sold as Piero's remedy. A name I did not choose if you must know the truth. 
The public has spoken its usual message of idiocy, spending their coin as a means of selecting Sokolov's formula over mine, uh, which I believe to be equal, if not superior. Much has been made over the popularity of these concoctions as a means of resisting this remarkable new plague. I say remarkable because this strain works with an efficiency we have not seen in the history of the Empire. This plague, now making its way to the city of Dunwall, is unrivaled in its effectiveness. I have studied it within the blood of those so afflicted, and it is nearly perfect. Elegant, in fact. And while it is true that Piero's remedy and Sokolov's elixir are known to protect the body against that plague equally, my own has properties not fully understood which relate to the mind itself and the spirit, and it is in this way that my formula wins out. Here is where one should pay attention to this contest, where you see Sokolov's elixir, with its emphasis on the brute animal body, is a crass goo better suited for livestock. The subtle and secret variants in the key ingredients making up Piero's remedy ensure that it works in higher functions that separate humankind from the mindless blue-jawed hagfish swimming in the Renhaven River. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and venture a guess. Since I've been finding things of Sokolov's elixir as health canisters, I'm going to go ahead and guess that Piero's remedy will start showing up as mana potions. I do get supernatural powers of some kind, apparently, so... Sokolov Technology in the New Age, excerpt from a recent book detailing Sokolov's machines. One of the advantages of Sokolov's techniques is, uh, sorry, technologies is that they share the same magnetic socket for the tanks of processed whale oil they use as fuel. Uh, when a tank is exhausted, neither can be plugged into place with ease, and the process is simple enough that any common workman, or even the lower guardsmen of the city watch, can handle the task. This applies to the arc pylon and wall of light security systems, as well as the powered carriages used for transport by those few who are wealthy enough to afford them. The only obvious downside of Sokolov's uh, designs is the volatility of the tanks themselves. A few incidents have occurred, resulting in damage to property or bodily harm whenever one of the tanks is exploded. I like that that's on the floor. Piero's request is denied. Piero, no, I will not sign off on these purchases. A bag of powdered crystal? Tivian ore? What's wrong with the metals and crystal? King Sparrow feathers. If you need feathers, sacrifice... A Tivian ore? What's wrong with the metals and crystal? King Sparrow feathers? If you need feathers, sacrifice your own pillow. Maybe at the Academy, everything you needed is paid for by tariff and handed out willy-nilly, but this is my bar, or what's left of it, and we're operating on a budget. We're running low on oil, food, elixir, building materials, and everything else, so you've got to slow down. While I'm putting the bill, I will not approve your purchases unless they're absolutely required. No more copper wire or special herbs. Uh, sorry, special herbs. If you need these things, go out and scavenge them. Half the city is in ruins, so no one is going to miss any of the odd crap you seem to need. Almost feel bad about that one, except he called a friend of mine a dick. Some kind of moron. Good lord! Reading the game. Uh, dead counter responsibilities. Except from a manual and new city watch procedures. Commissioned by the Lord Regent in the face of the growing plague crisis, the dead counter is a position that will only be given to officers, usually of junior or middle grades. In most matters of edict or curfew enforcement, these officers will defer to the acting officer on duty. However, any dead counter will have command in situations related to the plague and the handling of the dead, including those with late-stage plague symptoms, uh, called weepers in common parlance. God. However, any dead counter will have command in situations related to the plague and the handling of the dead, including those of late-stage plague symptoms, called weepers in common parlance. Starting the month of rain, interested officers may apply for the test and, if accepted, for the two-week training tour. Pay will be administered in coin and rations of elixir at one and one-half normal pay grade. Hey guys, this video ran on way too long, so I'm going to cut it here and split it into two parts. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play Dishonored.